Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're just going to wait a few minutes while people trickle into the um, scoping meeting, and then we'll get we'll get started. A few minutes. Okay, go ahead and get started here. Uh, good afternoon. At this time, we're gonna start the public scoping meeting for the PRC 421 decommissioning project. It's June 24th, 2021, two o'clock. Um, welcome and thank you for your interest in this project. My name is Eric Gillis. I am the Assistant Chief of the Environmental Planning and Management Division of the California State Lands Commission. I'll be overseeing the preparation of the Environmental Impact Report, or EIR, for the project in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. Next slide, next slide, please. All of you are joining the Zoom meeting. We'll currently see a slide showing notes on the format of the meeting. You'll see the chat and raise hand functions. Please note that this meeting is being recorded as we're going to um, get transcripts from the comments received tonight. I have a presentation to share with you describing the project and the CEQA process. When the presentation is complete, we will give more detailed instructions on how to comment in Zoom or by phone and then open the meeting to public comments. Next slide, please. Our agenda includes introductions and the purpose of this meeting description of the proposed project, a quick overview of the CEQA process, and receipt of public comments that are delivered today. Afternoon and evening meetings have the same agenda and presentation. Um, the State Lands Commission will be acting as a lead agency under CEQA and preparing the environmental report, impact report for the project with assistance from Padre Associates. The commission is working with ExxonMobil as they will be carrying out the project decommissioning. This is a, there, there is a joint review panel for the project uh, made up of state lands, the city of Goleta and the Coastal Commission, California Coastal Commission. With me on the Zoom panel from state lands is Joe Fable from our legal division, Jeff Plink and Peter Regan from our mineral resources management division and our Zoom hosts are Mike, Mike Farina and Kate Robinson Phillip. Next slide, please. The purpose of this meeting is to, for the public to provide input and comment on the scope of the issues and analysis that the State Lands Commission should consider in the EIR. The testimony we are interested in receiving at this point is your comments on the project's range of actions, potential effects, mitigation measures, and project alternatives that would that you'd like to see considered in the environmental impact report. In the interest of time, please limit your comments to these issues. We will be accepting comments, but not engaging in extensive question and answer sessions at these meetings. Comments can also be provided in writing by email um, or by letter um, through July 9th, 2021. I'll have more information on that in a later slide. Next slide, please.
<clears throat> Most of the project area is on the Sandpiper Golf Course property and adjacent beach in the city of Goleta. Access would be from the gate at the Elwood onshore facility off Hollister Avenue and an easement through the golf course to the pier locations. Next slide, please. Here's a close up of the two piers in Quezon PRC 421 pier on the left and 421 2 pier on the right. The 421 1 had a water injection well whereas 421-2 on the right had an oil production well. Both wells were plugged and abandoned pursuant to California Geologic Energy Management Division regulatory specifications in 2019. Next slide. Project components that the EIR will analyze include removal of the soil and fill inside both caissons down to the existing bedrock, including all interior debris cutting and removing all well casings down to the existing bedrock elevation and installation of final welded well cap. Removal of these caissons, external pile and concrete walls, including con concrete footings. Full removal of both pier structures and support to the bedrock interface. Next slide, please. Uh, continuing, decommissioning and removal of the two inch and six inch pipelines beneath the access road, removal of the access roadway and re supporting revetment, flushing, grouting, and abandonment in place the two inch and six inch pipelines beneath the golf course pipeline corridor to the EOF, and then final site restoration. Next slide, please. The project will require a beach access location. A temporary ramp will be constructed so equipment could get onto the beach for decommissioning activities. In order to build the ramp, access will be required through the emergency access road at the Bacara Resort. As you'll see on this aerial photo to the, to the left, there is the, the access road through the Bacara Resort. Um, it's needed to get on the beach to construct the, the ramp. Um, but once the ramp is complete um, for the decommissioning, the ramp would be, um, or the, the car would um, access would no longer be needed. Next slide. Major steps in the process of removing the pier and caisson structures are to remove the caisson fill, cut well casing and well final plug and abandonment cap at bedrock, demolish the caissons, remove pier structures, recycle and dispose of soils and all the materials, and then beach site restoration. Specific details on the removal of the pipelines, access road and revetment are currently being developed and will be included in the EIR analysis. Next slide, please. This slide shows a schematic of the EIR process. We are currently in the notice of preparation scoping period with the scoping meeting today. The next steps will be preparing and circulating the draft EIR where we'll have additional public meetings. Then the final EIR will be prepared and taken to the commission at a public hearing for certification and consideration of the project. We will present a tentative schedule on another slide. Next slide, please. The contents of the EIR will describe the environmental setting of the project area, disclose the potential environmental impacts of the project and alternatives, propose measures to reduce and avoid significant environmental impacts. The purpose is to provide technical sound information for decision makers to consider in evaluating and considering the proposed project. Next slide, please. Uh, the NOP, um, provides a preliminary list of potential impacts to several issue areas, including aesthetics, air quality, biological resources, coastal processes, cultural resources and tribal cultural resources, geology and soils, greenhouse gas emissions, hazards and hazardous materials, hydrology, water quality, 
land use, noise, and transportation. Other com commission considerations will include environmental justice and sea level rise. Next slide, please. This slide shows a tentative schedule we're working with at this point. We're currently in the 30-day public review that started June 8th of earlier this month. Uh, comments are due July 9th, 2021. Um, following the NOP, we'll, we'll release the draft EIR for 40-day public review period. With the public meeting during that time, we anticipate releasing it in September and then proposed um, commission action and final EIR in the project in December at a public hearing. Deconstruction is proposed for spring and summer of next year, 2021. It's anticipated that the project construction would last approximately six months to, de to remove um, the structures. Next slide. Before we open it up, for public comments, here are helpful comment um, scoping comments we'd like to receive. Identify the location and extent of environmental impacts. Recommend issues to be addressed in the EIR. Recommend alternatives that would avoid or reduce impacts of the proposed project. Next slide. And now I'll turn it over to Katie. She'll give instructions and call on speakers and so we'll um, take public comments at this point. Thank you, Eric. Um, if any of the attendees would like to provide public comment um, today, there are several options. Um, so if you would like to provide verbal comment, you may raise your hand using the Zoom function at the bottom of the screen. If you're calling in, please press star nine on your keypad and that will raise your hand. Um, and we will call on you in the order in which you raise your hand. We are also accepting public comments via the chat function. Um, the chat uh, is set up to go to all of the panelists. And so if you would like to submit comments that way, um, please do so in the chat. And we will now start taking public comments. So if you would like to raise your hand, please do so. And if you're having any trouble with audio, um, please try calling in, thank you. Okay, for our first commenter, we have Sean Anderson. Hey, you guys, can you hear me okay? Hi, Sean, yes, we can hear you, thank you. Yeah, so thanks so much, this uh, this looks great. I guess uh, um, my first comment was just be about timing, and I'm sure you guys already thought about this, but with the six month duration that, that raises some issues with shorebird migration and stuff of that nature. And so um, one, I guess I'm, I'm curious as to why the spring, summer, as opposed to a uh, fall, winter. Um, I understand the logistics is probably easier, less winter storms and such, but but um, there might be some ability to reduce potential impact by by shifting the, the time. And then the other comment is, um, I think, uh, um, I'm not entirely sure if this um, draft EAR is, is the right venue, but, but as much as we can, um, uh, see if we could maximize the ability of this um, removal as a type of case study. So currently managed retreat is, is obviously a, a, a hot topic in some communities. Oftentimes we're, we're sort of very pressed because of a crisis situation. This is less so of a crisis, crisis situation. We have a bit more of a sort of flexible time. So I'm just curious if we could give some, some thought to maybe some ways to test some of the approaches to manage retreat and to dealing with um, uh, uh, this process. And so maybe that's a kind of thing where the, where the construction is designed in phases as opposed to like one six month, maybe there's a way to break it up into two or three month segments or something of that nature. Um, and, and to use this as a test bed to evaluate other approaches to manage retreat for other areas that are more controversial or problematic. Um, uh, and then lastly, I, I just am, am curious as to what the, the mitigation measures that you guys are thinking about. Are you, are you thinking about living shorelines, things of that nature, dune, dune type of approaches, or rather just simply um, returning sediment to the, the same um, elevation as, uh, as if those caissons weren't there? 
So uh, real quickly, but those are my, my suggestions or comments. And uh, thank you for this presentation. Thank you, Sean. Do we have any other members who would like to provide comment? Um, if so, please raise your hand. And we do have um, one chat that was submitted, so I will read this into the record. Um, the chat is from Jacqueline Rosa, and it says, one of the potential impacts mentioned were those to tribal cultural resources. How do you plan to connect with local tribal nations to communicate and mitigate potential impacts culturally important to their communities? And so again, if you would like to provide a verbal comment, um, you may do so by raising your hand um, with the raise hand Zoom feature at the bottom of your screen. Additionally, you can also press star nine if you are calling in to raise your hand and we will call on you to speak. Um, and then you may also submit your comments um, through the chat function. We don't have any more speakers, Katie. Um, yes, so at this time we have no other hands raised and no other chats um, in the chat box. Okay. All right, well, we'll go ahead and proceed then if there's no more comments. Um, Oh, there was one chat um, submitted um, just now by Sean Anderson, and he would like to identify himself as Sean uh, Anderson with ESRM program of um, uh, CSU Channel Islands. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed with the, the next slide, please. Okay, so written comments um, to be received by Friday, July 9th, 2021. The preferred option is to send comments via email. Um, email address sequa.comments at slc.ca.gov. Or, and please write in the subject line, PRC 421 decommissioning project NOP comments or you could send via mail to California State Lands Commission, attention me, Eric Gillis, at 100 Howe Avenue, Suite 100 South, Sacramento, California, 95825. And then in your comments, please be sure to include your name and contact information so we could add to the project notification list. Um, the next public meeting will be after publication of the EIR. Um, as I mentioned, we're shooting for September timeframe. Um, next slide, please. In the meantime, please contact me with any concerns, questions, or requests for notification. 
Thank you for your interest in this project, your comments, and your attendance. We can conclude the, the meeting. <laughs>